Hello everybody, my name is Lighton Piri. I'm from the Invest of Zambia. The title of my talk is User Centered Design and Implementation of Useful Picture Archiving and Communication Systems for Effective Radiological Workflows in Public Health Facilities in Zambia. Quite the mouthful there. Um, I wanted to start off by thanking the organizers of the fourth African Human Community Interaction Conference, Africa 2023, for making it possible for us to participate virtually. Um, also, uh, I want to make mention of the fact that I'm giving this talk on behalf of my six uh, other co-authors. Uh, furthermore, it's worth mentioning that this work uh, was a collaborative venture between the University of Zambia and the University Teaching Hospital, specifically the Adult uh, Hospital. Um, this is the outline of the presentation. I want to start off with a bit of marketing. Um, I happen to be a founding member of the Data Lab Research Group at the University of Zambia. This is a research laboratory that comprises of faculty staff and uh, research students, both undergraduate and postgraduate students. And what we do is we uh, situate our research in three main areas. So we conduct research in data mining, where our focus is mostly uh, uh, tied to the application of AI or machine learning techniques. Um, um, and also we do research that is aligned or situated in the subfield of computing called digital libraries. Um, furthermore, we also conduct uh, research that is uh, linked to so-called educational technology or uh, technology-enhanced learning. So the bottom right is a link to our research group website. There's quite a wealth of information. We encourage you to uh, take the time and uh, check out what it is we've been doing. And if you find anything interesting and you'd want to collaborate with us, please do, do reach out. We're always happy to collaborate with other researchers out there. Um, also, it's worth mentioning that the the talk is linked to a much larger project, which is referred to as Enterprise Medical Imaging in Zambia project. And what we are doing in this project is we're trying to explore uh, the use of enterprise medical imaging strategies and artificial intelligence techniques in order to streamline radiological workflows in public health facilities in Zambia. Um, again, there's a link on the bottom right of the current slide. Uh, it should take you to the project website. Um, there should be sufficient information on the project website enough to give you a sense of what it is we're working towards. And again, if you're interested in this specific project, please do reach out to us. Um, it would be nice to, to work with uh, other experts in this particular area. I want to uh, transition now and, and, and give, uh, I think, what I want to call a crash course introduction to radiological workflows. Um, it turns out that... Um, the end-to-end -end radiological workflow is typically initiated when a patient finds themselves at a the hospital and they're attended to by a referring physician. Um, in, in, in some instances, for a referring physician to make a more informed decision, insofar as the diagnosis associated with pathology is concerned, they would require an examination to be performed. So what the referring physician or the general practitioner will do is they will request for an examination to be performed by a radiographer or an operator. Um, so this would uh, entail maybe filling out a physical form or something. Um, the examination is then performed on the patient. This examination could be something like uh, an X-ray, for instance, uh, or maybe a CT scan, which will ultimately result in the generation of a medical image. Um, the medical image is then sent to a radiologist who does um, a so-called interpretation of the image. Um, in essence, trying to provide an explanation for what could be wrong with the patient. Um, after that is done, the radiologist would then send the interpretation report to the referring physician. Um, so simply put, that's the end-to-end -end process of a radiological workflow. Now, for you to better understand what actually goes on, it's, it's perhaps helpful to look at a completely different view. So what the current slide does is it showcases the same radiological workflow, but from a completely different, <coughs> different perspective. Um, where the key activities performed in the workflow are categorized into five main components. Uh, key takeaway point here is uh, the last three, or at least the categories that are in the red bounding box here, it turns out that these um, uh, are actually activities that would involve at some point the use of medical images. Um, an important point to note here is that medical images would typically be utilized by one, different cadres or different rows. So referring physicians would, would want to make use of the medical image, radiographers and radiologists. 
Um, the other important point to note here, point number two, is that these medical images will typically be utilized at varying stages of your typical radiological workflow. Um, what we're trying to, the argument we're trying to make here is that it becomes important for this medical image to be handled or stored in a very systematic manner, ideally. Um, yet another view here is from the perspective of so -called, uh, a so-called enterprise medical imaging strategy. What we're showcasing here are the different technological infrastructures that would be required uh, for activities, for these activities linked to radiological workflows to be performed. Um, it turns out that the focus of attention in this particular work was on what's referred to as a picture archiving and communication system, otherwise called a PAX platform. The role of the PAX platform is essentially to facilitate the storage, management, and eventual access to these medical images. So X-rays, uh, uh, CTs, um, ultrasound images, um, and, and various other modalities. Um, so what we set out to do in this particular study really was we wanted to investigate the feasibility of designing and implementing a useful, usable, user-friendly and interoperable picture archiving and communication system that would be used in public health facilities in Zambia. Um, in terms of the specific things we did, we initially started off by attempting to understand the medical imaging workflows um, and then subsequently uh, conducted a systematic evaluation of uh, popular free and open source PAX platforms um, with the goal of identifying a suitable uh, force platform that would be used as the best framework. So a framework that would, we could easily modify and extend, seeing as it would be open source and freely available. Um, after the design and implementation of, uh, of the PAX platform, we conducted a usability evaluation of the PAX platform. Um, for us to understand these uh, medical imaging workflows, what we did was we conducted uh, a study at two large referral hospitals in Zambia, so that's the University Teaching Hospitals and Levi Mwanawasa University Teaching Hospital. Um, we focused our attention on two main cutters, that would be radiologists and radiographers, and we used convenience sampling to narrow down on actual participants that we, we recruited to participate in the study. Um, in essence, what we did was we conducted um, guided interviews um, with the hope of trying to determine how medical images are stored, managed, and accessed. In terms of the design and implementation of the PAX platform, we set out to, first of all, um, identify active, uh, free and open source PAX platforms or PAX, uh, PAX projects um, with the hope of using that as a basis to identify the appropriate you know, uh, software platform that we would, would, would use during the design and implementation of the PAX platform. Um, so we came up with an evaluation matrix that had a whole range of factors that we uh, took into account. So we looked at uh, more technically inclined factors, for instance, the specific um, base language that was used as, as a basis to implement the platform, um, the extent towards which the platforms were extensible, um, you know, factors associated with uh, you know, database support and the specific types of operating systems that, that, that are supported by the platforms. Um, in addition to that, we looked at more uh, uh, radiology inclined factors, like for instance, uh, we were interested in trying to find out which of the platforms were actually DICOM compliant, uh, which ones supported DICOM modality worklist, the creation of DICOM modality worklist, and of course, seeing as uh, this PAX platform wouldn't operate in isolation, we're interested in finding out uh, the, the, the support associated with uh, uh, APIs, for instance, and the extent towards which these platforms uh, were scalable. Um, the current slide just showcases a high-level uh, overview, uh, context diagram or a data flow level zero diagram of um, the system that was eventually implemented. Um, point worth mentioning here is that you notice that there's uh, another system here. Um, in essence, the reason why we have the MIU system is make it possible for radiographers to push or to deposit or upload medical images into the PAX platform once an examination is concerned, because it turns out that the examination is typically uh, conducted using a modality that is connected to a completely different computer. Um, that would be located also on the network. Um, in terms of the usability evaluation, what we did was we conducted a con controlled experiment. Uh, the study setting was the university teaching hospitals, and we worked with uh, radiology registrars, ideally. 
who were recruited using convenience sampling. Um, so the, the recruited participants were required to perform a predefined task, which in essence involved searching for a specified DICOM file uh, within the implemented uh, PAX platform. A DICOM file is nothing more than uh, a medical image in a specific or a standardized format. So DICOM format is similar to uh, the images that we take using our phones or our digital cameras, for instance. Um, the idea be behind the DICOM file is it not only has the bit streams associated with the image itself, but also the metadata of the descriptive information associated with the image. So information like, uh, you know, the demographic details of the patient on which the examination was co was conducted. Um, after performing the task, the participants were required to fill out uh, a term two post uh, experiment questionnaire, which enabled us to assess the perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use of the PAX platform. Um, in terms of the results, um, uh, the results from uh, the, the, the study aimed at understanding medical image workflows um, seems to point at the fact that most of the challenges associated with retrieval um, of, of images that are generated after an examination is, is conducted. Um, this actually uh, necessitates the need for implementing an information system such as a PAX platform. Uh, as it would make it a lot easier for people to search and browse for information. Um, the current site just showcases a screenshot of the prototype uh, PAX platform that was designed and implemented. It's worth mentioning here that uh, the Daikugo platform was eventually uh, selected as the best framework and subsequently modified. Um, just showcasing um, or highlighting results associated with the usability study, so a spider chart just showcases um, the different term two aspects. Um, it's worth mentioning here that you notice that there was an overwhelming uh, or a positive response associated with uh, whether the, the prototype PAX platform was linked to the participants' intention to actually use the system. Um, we also see interesting results associated with the potential results demonstrability of the PAX platform and, of course, the extent towards which the platform is relevant uh, or was relevant to the participants' day-to-day um, -day job uh, activities. Um, we, we also incorporated in the um, questionnaire, the post-experiment questionnaire, um, a provision for participants to provide us with open-ended questions uh, or comments. And you'll notice that most of the open-ended comments that were coming from the, uh, from the participants seem to suggest a need for auxiliary features um, in addition to the, to the to the ones that are available out of the box in platforms such as Daikugo. Um, this is a good thing because part of the reason why we conducted the, the, the study was to use it as a basis to start refining uh, the requirements. Um, so it's so just more comments uh, or open-ended uh, comments that were made by the participants here. Um, in conclusion, um, just a reminder here that we set out to uh, to undertake a study that was aimed at demonstrating the feasibility of designing and implementing um, a cost-effective, uh, useful, and easy-to-use PAX platform that would uh, subsequently be deployed and used in public health facilities in Zambia. Um, and we did that by, first of all, understanding medical imaging workflows and then subsequently evaluating uh, using uh, a defined uh, uh, evaluation metrics, uh, evaluating uh, a total of five force packs platforms, uh, which uh, subsequently resulted in us selecting uh, the Daikugo platform. Um, in terms of ongoing work, um, we are currently working towards refining the prototype uh, uh, or using the prototype to further refine the requirements and subsequently implement a production quality packs platform. It's worth mentioning that we ultimately settled for um, the Authank platform as opposed to Daikugo. So the production quality PAX platform will use Authank as a best platform, ideally. Um, and the idea behind doing this is it's part of um, our much bigger goal of trying to take advantage of more modern or perceived effective um, techniques that uh, effectively make use of AI techniques. Um, and it turns out that we can only do that um, if we have the best infrastructure in place. So your picture archiving and communication, uh, picture archiving and communication systems and the radiology information systems, for instance. 
just wanted to take this opportunity to thank um, um, entities that uh, provided support by way of funding. Uh, so we, we have generous grants from Google Research, Data Science Africa, and the Invest of Zambia. Uh, we are very appreciative of this funding. Thank you very much, and uh, I'll pause and take questions now and, and, and hope that some of you would be keen to collaborate with us. Thank you.